The Equality Act may finally make it illegal to discriminate against queer and trans kids when they're looking for a job or a house. I'm Yunj Kim, and this is MTV News Need to Know. Bianca Muffin Banks is one of seven young trans people in the United States murdered in 2021, and those are just the ones we know of. Violence against trans people is an epidemic, and it disproportionately affects black women who make up 91% of trans murder victims. At this rate, 2021 is on track to become the deadliest on record. Transphobia and racism are at the root of this, but systemic enablers like houselessness and job discrimination remain widely undiscussed. Muffin, a young black woman in Georgia, struggled with houselessness in one of the 21 states that do not have laws protecting people based on sexual orientation or gender identity when it comes to housing. This is terrible, but not surprising, given that 29% of LGBTQ plus youth have experienced homelessness, been kicked out or run away. And 40% of Americans experiencing homelessness are gay or trans, despite making up less than 6% of the overall population. The Equality Act that was reintroduced last week is vital because it would provide blanket protections for LGBTQ plus people in housing and employment. But the GOP supports it needs to pass is not there yet. ACLU lawyer and trans rights activist Chase Strangio tweeted, Everyday new bills, more hearings, in the midst of a pandemic, escalating climate crisis. And this is what state legislators are prioritizing, attacking trans kids. He's referring to 50 anti-trans bills popping up all over the U.S., most in response to the Equality Act and other recent LGBTQ plus rights legislation. This week, 17 states are considering a bill barring trans girls from playing school sports as their gender, and 11 states are considering bills that would block trans kids from getting gender-affirming health care. In some cases like Alabama, offering this to trans youth could even be a felony. All of this contributes to a spiral of downward mobility imposed upon trans people from a young age. When people's protections are not made a legislative priority, they become more vulnerable to discrimination, marginalization, and violence. So what's behind these countermeasures this week? It turns out there is one main private interest group authoring most of these 50 bills, the Alliance Defending Freedom. You may remember ADF as the sponsor for the anti-gay cake shop lawsuit that went to the Supreme Court and won in 2018. They described themselves as a religious liberty organization, while the Southern Poverty Law Center labeled them as an LGBTQ plus hate group. So what's clear is that as long as trans rights are not enshrined at the federal level, private interest groups will continue to chip away at them from the state level. And while they are advancing anti-trans causes, this legislation doesn't reflect popular opinion among voters. A recent Human Rights Coalition survey found that 87% of respondents in 10 swing states believed trans people should have equal access to medical care. On social media, the hashtag Faith for Equality has been used by religious leaders who support the Equality Act. Earlier this month, Housing and Urban Development announced that queer and trans people will be protected under the Fair Housing Act, meaning that discrimination against LGBTQ plus people when buying or renting a house would be illegal under federal law. This is huge, but this act can be reinterpreted or reversed by future administrations. As the Trans Law Center tweeted just last week, we need accessible affirming shelter. We need opportunities to have ownership and autonomy in our living spaces. We need a culture change so that we are welcomed and loved in our homes. This is why we need Congress to pass the Equality Act to explicitly protect queer and trans people. We need to make sure these protections stick while we have a Democrat majority and compassionate administration. People like Muffin suffer because it is still legal in many states to discriminate against the trans community. And we can see how anti-trans legislation literally results in youth dying. So when private interest groups and the right cite religious freedom, remember their freedom comes at the cost of other people's pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. I'm Yunj Kim, and that's what you need to know.